And then it re he remarks on this sort of uh, breakthrough, this discovery in the uh, item that was gifted unto him by Justin de la Malone some weeks back. Hmm. You don't necessarily detail what the breakthrough was, although I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out what, <laughs> what it was. Uh, but he does a tale that there was a breakthrough, and that this, to him, could mean a turning point in not only his research, but just how the clockwork goes, he says. The clockwork? Is it like a literal descriptive thing, or is it like a Control F, clockwork in the book. <laughs> if only books were so easy. You I mean, live in a magic world, surely. But. <laughs> this is fair, but that he does specifically say that. How the yeah. clockwork goes. To, uh, given the nature of what we just experienced, I believe the clockwork would be the internal workings of whatever he infected. That makes sense. They were a bunch of cogs, essentially. Does it, like, describe why he was, like, for the benefit of science or something? Or was he trying to it, amass an army? He doesn't ever, he doesn't detail his reasoning behind stuff. Okay. It's not, it wasn't within his purview. Anything else you guys want to inquire about within this? Yeah, is there anything yeah. open it that's not like nerd stuff? <laughs> no, it's basically all nerd stuff. No, he's just a bit. Oh, in fact, right here it says, My name is Justin Taylor Moore, giant nerd, always have been, always will be in memoriam. Actually, because he said Justin Taylor Moore, does it say anything else besides like his small intervention? Is it if just you guys like read back. Like, you guys specifically page back a couple weeks, you know, to when uh, just, Aiden Hughes describes that, oh, when that gift he gave me some time back. You have actually find the, the time period in which he mm. gets the gift. And then basically that, from that day onward for like the next week or so, it's basically a series of frustrations, <laughs> confusions. Uh, and it, you note that there's a very cautious hand in writing it. He laments over stuff, but then quickly reasons it out or lessens its impact uh well so, while they're looking over the journal can i just sort of go near the door doorway and keep an eye out for seekers or slayers coming toward the, the building yeah you just are on the lookout again uh nevin and Virtus are out there yeah, if I see uh, anyone approaching or making for the door, I'll tell uh, I'll tell Chedimir to stuff the bag, uh, the book in the bag, the yeah. journal in the bag. Does Does Chedimir say what she said out loud? Say what? Is, oh no, uh, Seema's else? reading the book. Se Seema's the one reading the book. And she, she said yeah, she you, was reading it out loud. You asked. Uh... Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, no, no. Chedimir asked, like, is there anything else in the book about Justin? Del Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm assuming you read, you said that out loud because you're the one that can't read it. So yeah, no, no, she mentioned that. Why? Yep. All okay. right, that's it. I don't care. I'm going outside. Have fun with your nerd stuff. <laughs> okay. Shout if someone's heading towards the place or this place. <laughs> as you, funny, funny, funny as you as you say that, you do see Seeker Captains Andre and Evelyn coming by, along with the three Seekers I went in with you. If I see that, I'll I'll tell them to stuff the book in the bag. Yeah, this is as Marshall is like giving up on the entire endeavor <laughs> and going to the door. You, being a, such a good friend, and look out. You look outside the door, and then you see them coming. Not necessarily like, they're not right in front of the door, but you see them just coming down the way. It's very obvious that they're coming here. So you stuff the book away. What book? Who knows? And That's evidence. <laughs> Uh, you see outside the door, Rodas and Evan do a salute, and then open up the doors for him. 
They enter. Adventurers. Captains. Hope you guys are finding some rest. Slowly but surely. What little there is in this world. <laughs> Emily gives you a tired smirk at that, Dima. Indeed. Now, for the purposes of our own logistical stuff, I came about to ask, when will you guys be departing? You're free to stay if you wish, but something tells me you guys are... Tonight I seems good to. with me. Tonight? I would... How about tomorrow morning, Marshall? <sighs> if you wish to go tonight... If, and she gives like a plaguing hand in your direction, Eldrick. What I am about to request of you might aid you in that endeavor. Hmm. She takes a step aside, gestures to Henri and to Janik Minder. These two have to go back to Cephalus. Give the conglomeration of our reports in person as well as detail further. As well as potentially put in the work and paperwork for promotion. And you see Henri get a very mischievous but proud smirk on her face and then Janik looks a bit confused behind him. <laughs> Me. A promotion. Yes, that's what was implied, Janik. Me? Yes. Definitely not Henri. I don't think she's gonna rise much above where she currently is. Henri <laughs> just gives her like an askance look. That that really hurts. That really hurts. It's probably true though. Oof. It, it's probably a bit true, but still, it really hurts. Captain, I'm not so sure I'm cut out for sergeant status or anything. That is good. People that are desiring of rank are often ones that don't deserve it. It's Seems a process, like Janik. It's a proud nod at that. <laughs> it's a process, Janik, and you might not even turn out in the way I wanted to, which would, I suppose, make it the way you wanted to, as of the moment. Go to Cephalus, if nothing else, to help Henri give the reports. Uh, is that an order? Does it have to be one? <laughs> Janik just goes quiet at that. Congratulations, you just got Volan told to come with me. Aye, aye, Captain. A classic. Anyways. If you want to go back tonight, having them go with you might help. Safety numbers. Although, I think after facing what we faced tonight, I... She shakes her head. I don't think there's much else in the world that can daunt us. There is the shepherd. I think they're a bit further south of here. Hellfuck, yeah. But that is a very good point, actually. So. I'm afraid I don't know anything about this lock. But the decision's yours. If you want to go, we can. But there's something I would ask of you first, Evelyn, if you have a moment. There's something I would like to tell you in private. Or rather, ask of you. She looks to the rest of you. Do any of you have any further business with me, Henri? She gestures to their team binder, the other seekers. Seema shakes her head no. No, but I thank you for your assistance. She gives a curt nod. And I thank you for yours. Quite literally instrumental. If you have no other business with me personally, then she just as you all, Aldrich. Let's go outside. A nod and a follow. This, this, she pulls Aldrich outside, I turn the... Let me tell you about how I pulled down a literal house on these creatures. <laughs> Wait, who do you say this to? <laughs> to Owen. To Owen? A house? It was three stories and it destroyed them <laughs> bigger than most people's houses definitely and he immediately goes to his pack and pulls out his uh, book 
Meanwhile, outside. She doesn't go that far or anything. She's like, she literally just steps outside the door. Takes a couple pace away to the side from uh, Virtus and Nevin. I, um, uh, instead of beating about the bush, I'll hold up the ring. Thank you for this. She holds out a hand to receive it back. You're quite welcome. I would ask that you lend this to me. I uh... sure is an eyebrow at that. <laughs> and she closes her hand, puts it behind her back to its original position. To what purpose? I have to send a message. I assure With... you that ravens and other assorted messenger birds are quite fine. <sighs> this one rolls her will... eyes lead to a confrontation a very immediate one and then I fill her in about the um, person I intend to send it to which I told you about and what mm. the content is and what it would mean and what the implication of that is Roll my persuasion I will add to that that I will send it back with Henri. Roll persuasion of advantage, then. Ooh. <laughs> Same, number. Same number both ways. 18. She, like, <laughs> pinches the bridge of her nose. You know, it's a common stereotype that adventurers have very terrible home lives, and I see that the stereotype is quite true. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> she looks you dead in the eyes. If you swear, return it. It's not mine. It's the Seeker's. If you swear to return it, then perhaps I could just say I misplaced it for the next few days in the camp. I swear it thrice. The instant I am done with it, I will put it in Henri's hands. You usually like a blank look, squinting, discerning your intents, your true intents. Eventually she stops, though. So. Very well, then. Don't lose it. And don't show it around when you get back to Sevlas. I will be using it long before we get back. Very well. Thank you. Don't make me regret it. Let's get back to the, uh, the others. Yeah, it's returning back inside. So. And then I cut my way right out of its belly. How do you. How do you swing it? <laughs> oh, it looks very confused. If you're. I think it was just through sheer strength. Like, look at this guy. I. You know, f <laughs> fair, fair enough. You press I. It up against the skin, and then you kick it. Oh, that's clever. Kid. Oh, and you see on uh, just like this side paper a series of relatively, you know, very well drawn, I'll be a very still sketch and rudimentary <laughs> like uh, figures doing different ideas of like how the hell do you swing while you're stuck in a confined space. And a lot of them have question marks and then when Marshall describes you kick it, he draws one like that and just <laughs> does a big circle around it. No, the okay. outside's a little bigger. Like just a little bit. It's... <laughs> I can just give you a look. What? <laughs> you can say it and he goes back to writing <laughs> the account. <clears throat> so. Is there anything else you guys would like to do? If not, I'm going to fast forward to tomorrow. 
Uh, oh, shit. Uh... There is one thing I would like to do. If we're leaving, uh, I, I would take last watch and I would go through Saurus's belongings. Also I, cares. I think you guys are... S- I don't know. Are you guys staying in town or are you guys going? Both. Staying. As players. Leave. Leave. Oh, really? Yeah, leave tomorrow morning. 50-50. Ah, crap. Oh, fuck it. We all have, like, dark vision, I believe, so let's just take off. We can, like, rest in the wagon and shit. Your girl needs know. spell slots. <laughs> Your girl can sleep in the wagon! Why should I... <laughs> Calling all captains! Anyways. Alright, so you guys are leaving now. I... Because it'd be a massive dick move of me, although it'd be very fitting to just kill you guys afterwards, uh, to do anything, I... We are a bit on the crunch right now, so... No, yeah. no fighty fight. This time. It's... You guys have approximately two days to go, or two nights at least, which I suppose you're... You're going faster than I anticipated. I thought you guys would stay the night, so good for you. Uh, best of my expectations, for once, when it comes to travel. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so two days and two nights, something like that, to get back to Sevlis. So we'll show up so, on the morning of day three, roughly? Yeah, okay. essentially. Uh, I'm going to fast forward the calendar, but we will roughly play out the time. Well, not roughly, I have shit in plan. We will play out the time in between. So, just, me uh, just because I remember that I have a bunch of monster bits in my bag, could Chedimir study some things on the road depends on what you're trying to study what you are studying and how you go about studying it okay uh staring at a piece of flesh reveals nothing about the flesh yeah uh i'm gonna go sure maybe bar patrons will agree with that (laughs) anyways (laughs) it was the the fish people the sample the samples i got from them i want to dissect that and try to understand you I didn't pre- really preserve that, mate. No, I didn't. And I yeah, was so questioning if you don't really have much samples left. Okay. Uh, but I still have, like, the Legionary stuff that I borrowed. Borrowed. And not the Asylum stuff, because that disappeared. Uh, I do have a bit of the trap goo. And she wanted to kind of, like, try and figure that out in a way. Like, how the fuck does this just make bone? Actually, I think we kind of figured that out. Kind of. I can't remember. Effectively, she just wants to try and understand how void beings operate a bit better. Like, do they just use void essence to manifest things? Do they make miniature portals that, like, these things come out of? Stuff like that. I think we covered that when you first examined the trap, Goo. Did it? You did. I don't remember what the end result was. And I, I, I told you that they don't use portals. Yeah. They are constantly jumping stuff in and out of the void, like previous endeavors. It rapidly forms in a sort of cancer-like manner. Rapidly forms. Like stem cells, getting put to use. Bowen in front of you. Hmm. Well, could she just study the samples that she has to try and understand void beings a little more in detail, or...? You could roll, I will make the DC high. I'll work with that, because I can't think of anything specific anyways. Could I get guidance? <laughs> this guidance. is not this, this is not like a one minute, ten minute endeavor. This takes yeah. hours. If That's you funny. actually want to get into it. Yeah. Seema with a supportive hand on her shoulder through the whole t- <laughs> thing. No. no. You can't okay. do that. Um so that that's, that's gonna happen on one of the days. Okay. Uh Aldrich, you wanted to look through the carts just the cart. Yeah, the I'll cart. do that. Yeah, I'll do that as we leave. I'm specifically looking for uh, I'm mainly interested in Sara's belongings, but I'll have a quick glance look through Kersis as well. Uh, I will look for any um, Ebonheart crest, any emblem he might have left behind, and also if there is a um, token or a symbol of Heartbroken Elysia. I would have to ask, oh, how... I don't think you had, like, the emblems or heraldry of the Evan Hearts on your clothes, right? You just had the ring, right? Uh, there would be a, um... 
Alicia, I think, but not necessarily Evan Hart. I don't know. You ask me. You tell me. There would be, um, I don't know what it's called. Whatever, like, where the shoulder and the chest meet. You know how there's normal. Like, oh, yeah, some... like, uh, not, not yeah. a lapel. That's like, a... yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like a pin. Tube. Yeah, we know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there'd be something there. Okay. Then, oh, did you find such on assorted outfits and uh, clothing, attire, blah, 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 <laughs> etc. Insert fancy term for clothes here. All right, I would uh, hold on to that. As for the symbol, I think you just have the one symbol for Soros, right? Yeah. Oh, it's the one you use in combat. And I mean, I, I, I don't really see why you would need two personally. I, I wouldn't. I don't know. But yeah, I think uh, I don't think you find such. Um. So I so think the only for... one I specifically said it was dropped as he left. <laughs> left. Yeah, I think I was swallowed by the portal to hell, though. Fair. Chedmer has his ring, if that means anything. Also, also another thing, they didn't really take the time to examine the girl when you, when you left. You're kind of traumatized. <laughs> Yeah, you're kind of traumatized, so it's understandable. I'm, I'm, I'm still saying, though, you didn't check the ground. Yeah. You're in a rush. But yeah, you find no Alicia-based uh, iconography. But I do, did find something of uh, House Ebenhardt. Correct. Kind of like a little hair, okay. I'll hold on to that. Little emblems here in the... Not little. Well, I guess they're relatively little. Alright. So you guys set out. I am um, uh, that very night. Apparently, I think it's probably around nine o'clock when you guys set out. Um, traveling through, the, you guys are allowed to take a short rest while on the cart, but you could also take an infinite amount of short rests and just spend all your hit dice. So, <laughs> uh, so. Just for simplicity's sake, just say you take a long rest while traveling. Okay. I don't think any of you guys are going to be running down and away from the car in the middle of the night, because that's stupid. So yeah, you guys are chilling, licking your wounds and such. So, uh, yeah. if, if there's a moment where we're either camped or taking watch, if when I'm doing, the, I would like to take last watch, because there's something I would like to do. Okay. And then you guys travel for probably a few hours, past midnight at the very least. And then at some point, you guys are just playing. Uh, you still easily manage to find, you know, you guys got some dry logs from the secret camp, so no worries there. You guys can set up tents real easily. Stuff like that. So I like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You guys do find ways to just chill for the night. And a sort of. Again, I'm trying to expedite through this to some degree again. Lots of scenes you get through. So, no watch order needs to get set. If you want to do something in the night, we just say one of the watch orders, you take it. And in this case, Aldrich, you have last watch. I will say, on the way out, uh, you guys do have a little bit of. Uh, leaving the perimeter camp. A little bit of a couple of scenes. Uh, first of which is, um, you see Evelyn and Henri. You know, as Henri is just sort of Evelyn's helping with this. She's not a slacker. Just stashing some of the dry log bundles onto your guys' wagon. One last thing Evelyn does is she produces the blade that Mira left her. And she hands it over to Henri with a knowing smirk. And Henri just sort of hid, sort of hiding, sort of not, just sort of tucks it away in their sheaves underneath some of the dry, dry wood bundles. So, those of you that are interested, you guys see that scene. Um, also, on your guys' way out, a number of seekers and maybe one or two slaves. Well, not a particularly outgoing bunch. 
a number of seekers do come up and inquire the details on such. To which Evelyn did tell you guys that it's up to you if you guys want to tell them. If you guys want to divulge information. Chenry would di honestly direct them towards Owen. <laughs> tell them literally everything until someone stopped them. <laughs> At some point, multiple times for Marshall, some other seeker comes up to that seeker and just, yeah, you're back to duty. And then <laughs> they leave. Some of them might be lying, some of them might not. Who knows? But uh, at the over-detailing of the story, <laughs> the Seeker's questioning Peter out of it. Uh, another scene that plays out is that during your guys' pack-up to leave, you know, in the torchlight, Tala tries to get on Shaxx, and uh, it's, like, it's like watching, um, yeah, we'll see. fuck, it's such an easy word, rodeo, there we go. You know, you ever see like a you know, buffalo fuck someone mm -hmm. off? Yeah, some mm -hmm. not buffalo, it's a bull. <laughs> I know, I'm pretty sure buffaloes could do the same thing. I don't even know why I'm. Just They're actually a lot worse, angry. probably. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah, at those Tala gets sent flying on back onto her ass multiple times. She tries to mount Shax. <laughs> She's like wiping the dirt off her face. Stupid. <laughs> Beast, could what has gotten into you? Mm. I do not understand what you're saying. Uh, Shadamir would like to use the ring of animal speaking to talk to Mr. Shax. You already used it up, nerd. Oh, this is the same night. This is the same night. This oh, is when okay. you guys are leaving. Well, never mind. Can she just try to infer mm -hmm. by like? Petting him and like being like, hey buddy, you're trying to like figure out. Roll me animal handling. Yeah. A disadvantage. I'll take it, because probably not gonna get good anyway. Yeah, no. What's that? Six Marshall! Shax is being unruly. Oh, is he? Mm. I mean, he is an Auroch. She rolls her eyes. You know what I mean. Just go over and put a hand on his mane. Mm. Look him in the eyes. <laughs> so what seems to be the problem? He seems fine now. How the fuck did you do that? She, she gives like a cautious and worried look at you and Shax. And then she goes to try to get on Shax again. To which he, once again... <laughs> This! That is the problem! Yeet! <laughs> she gets yeeted off him. <sighs> Pats herself down. Does he not <sighs> like other people? You've seen, you seen Tala on Shax plenty of times before. Hmm. No, I believe it is your time to get your own mount. <laughs> she gets like a, are you shitting me look? Haha, <laughs> very funny. No, I believe he is telling you you are ready. <laughs> ready for what? To get another animal? Ready to become your own. She... <laughs> small stature, big aura. She crosses her arms and just taps her finger, you know, metal to metal. Uh-huh. Do you agree with this? Marshall just jumps on his back. <laughs> yes, I do. I doubt that. <laughs> she walks away and goes to <laughs> the cart. Wagon, whatever. Coach. Mm. Shax makes some remark about Tala in his traditional Auroch manner. And just scratch behind his ear. I agree. You're the walking. 
Jennifer is mumbling to herself. He can't talk to animals. He can't talk to animals. He can't talk to animals. Don't tell yourself he can talk to animals. <laughs> Bear comes up. Are you okay? I'm fine. She has like, like a tray of like mugs. She offers oh. one. <laughs> I will take that. Thank you. <laughs> it's coffee. She goes over to everyone else. Anyone want coffee? Might be a long night. I can't stomach the taste. Do you have any tea? I do have some Watcher's Wake. I would be most thankful. She turns the tray to one side, directing the tray just over to you. Alright. I This hopefully <laughs> won't be relevant. But until you guys go to, re go to bed in a few hours, you guys have an advantage on initiative. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be pertinent unless you guys fight each other. But, in case you do, it should be mentioned. Now is the time to strike. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Uh, does anyone have anything in the coming couple days, couple nights, they want to do? I have a few scenes of my own I need to do. Two uh, things. Sure, I? Uh, I'm gonna uh, interspar some in between, so. One scene of you guys, one scene. Mine. I would look myself. for I would look for materials for the project I've talked to you about. I think you have the materials. Is a thing. Like you just I, need to get them from the bag. Yeah, and I believe there were some left behind by Karis as well. That's why I was interested in them. Yes. No, that's easy to find. All right, and so that's one thing, and then the other is connected to why I was looking for Saurus's things at the end of a watch. Okay. Let me look through my scenes here, so we can establish maybe some chronological order, because that would be nice. Mm -hmm. I do have something as well. Excellent. It's a scene where you give Nebby the talk. <laughs> so... <laughs> the dragons and the drakes, let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Okay, one of these is actually one I think you guys are going to do anyway, so I, I can get rid of that. Mm. Uh, Owen's in the process of asking you guys stuff, so we'll culminate that to one of its own scenes. It happens over the course of the days, so. though. But other than that, uh, let's start. So, uh, since yours is first, Fred, with your 